Hey fellas, good morning to you. Got another build. This one I'm not going in depth on the build. It is the uh, Tamiya 148 scale F14A Tomcat. However, I'm doing something really cool with it. And this is a commission build. It's going to be in flight on a base, but it's going to be in Maverick and Goose's markings from Top Gun. So, I'm at the point where I'm ready to put primer on it. And I don't go over too much of the build in this video. In fact, I don't think I go over any of it. It's a pretty easy kit to build. There are a lot of people doing videos on it. Uh, so, this is the fourth one that I've built, I think. And I put them all in flight. It is a little bit difficult to put them in flight because Tamiya doesn't have the kit set up to close up the uh, wheel bay doors. But, uh, you know, you just got to fiddle with it. So anyway, go over the magnets, because uh, I get a lot of questions on that, even though I've done a couple videos on it. And then I will uh, just go over some basic stuff with how I do get ready to paint. And uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. So enjoy the video. All right, for some of you newer guys, let's recap how I <clears throat> put magnets on my missiles, because I ship a lot of planes and... Uh, and it's a lot easier just to put magnets on them rather than try to glue them after they're painted because they'll fall off. So what I've got is, and I've, and I've done a video on this before, but I have kind of changed it up so it doesn't hurt to go over it again. So what you're going to need is obviously the missiles and the pylons. And uh, I will actually glue this pylon on the plane. So the only magnetization is going to be between the missile and the pylon, just like that. And if I've got, let's say I've got these Mavericks, I want, to, uh, I want to put the magnets all in the same spot so you don't have to search and find uh, the, the pylon which this specific ma Maverick goes on. So this Maverick that I've already had magnetized will fit on this one and vice versa. Oh, I dropped that one. So they'll all fit on any pylon you put them on that go with the Mavericks. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind. So let's take a look at what you're going to need. You're going to need some super glue. Now I use this Flexi 5K stuff, <coughs> this slow setting stuff. It's really good for metal, but you could probably just use regular super glue because a lot of this is going to be a press fit anyway. Uh, you're going to need... Uh, drill bits. I like to use these micro drill bit bits to start my hole. You can get these on Amazon. I picked up like five cases of these for, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks, if that. Uh, drill bits that are going to be the size diameter as your magnets, and you want to get right at the size of the diameter of your magnets. This is a three millimeter drill, drill bit, and for these Mavericks, I'm going to be using three millimeter in diameter magnets. Um, I like to use red paint, and you'll see how that comes into play. A toothpick, and here are my magnets. We'll take a look at these. Get this down here so you can see. These are three millimeter diameter magnets, and I think it's three by two. So it's three millimeters wide by either one or two deep. I'm not exactly sure. And these are pretty good for like bigger things like this because they're a little bit stronger than these smaller ones I'm gonna show you. Um, here are some two by two millimeter magnets. And they're for like smaller missiles, but some uh, missiles that you can, or things you can uh, stick these in, drill a little bit farther. And they're, they, are, they are fairly strong, but you're not going to be holding up a, uh, a big 132nd scale uh, fuel tank with one of these. You'll have to have a lot of these. So uh, the bigger the item is, the bigger the magnet that I like to use. Uh, I've also got some 2 millimeter by 1 millimeter, I believe these are. Take a look at these. And 
These are really good for like Sidewinder missiles. And let's see, because I'm not gonna be able to drill really deep into this, but as you can see there, I'm gonna be stretching it to stick something like this in. And this isn't gonna require a lot of strength and magnet magnetism just because it's so small. So one of these should hold this in place. Let's turn my light back on. So what I like to do is I'll find a place on my Maverick missiles or whatever missile I'm doing. I like to find a, a point and pick out that point and drill a small little pilot hole. And I put it in the same spot on each one of the missiles. Now I'm leaving this, these little indentions here. Uh, before what I would do is I would just put two magnets in here, one in here, one in here, and I would cut off these nubs. Well, that's really not necessary and it's a little extra work to do it that way and you're wasting magnets. So I just leave these on here as kind of a, a to help place my missile. And I'll just pick out a point and I've picked out the same point if we can get another one of these here on each one of the missiles, I drill my pilot hole. Now I'm gonna be putting a three millimeter by one millimeter magnet in here. So I'm gonna get my three millimeter drill bit. I'm just gonna drill through here. And it gets kinda iffy because there's some parts that go on inside of here. Some of these wings on this Tamiya kit glue in so when my drill when my drill bit gets in there it kind of tosses it off but it should be deep enough because these aren't very aren't very deep <coughs> now i want the polarization of the magnets the same on each one of the missiles okay so i'm going to want to insert it on this missile just like i have it inserted here with the negative down and the, the positive up and how i do that is i'll just mark on this with a black marker the way that uh, the top portion so I know that this is always going to be up when I insert my magnets. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip my magnet in my super glue and stick it in here push it to the side and if it's not flat because you want it flat you can always come along I've got this side of my tweezers and I just make sure that it's is flat as I can get it okay now if I want to go ahead because this is slow curing I'll just hit this with some kicker to make sure all that CA glue is dried and it's in there nice and tight now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paint and I like to use red paint And I try to make a small dot right in the center of this magnet. And then I'll take my pylon using these little nubs as my guide, stick it on here. And now I've got a spot right here which to drill and place my opposing magnet. So we'll drill this out. with my small drill bit, get a pilot hole started. Ugh, my magnets are sticking everywhere. And I will drill out my three millimeter hole. You don't have to drill all the way through. You just have to drill deep enough where your uh, the depth of your magnet can fit in. So you can make sure, yeah, that'll be plenty deep. Now, this is where it gets kind of tricky. Now you want to, you want to be placing this magnet to where the negative and positive match up. Okay, now if I put it with this end facing up what's gonna happen is it's not going to attach it they just repel each other so I know I want this end up okay 
So it's already marked on here with the red paint. So I know I want to put this end down. So this, this is the end that's facing up. Dip it in some CA glue. I need a little more than that. I like to get it right around the edges so it, when I stick it in, it, it uh, glues the edges down as well. Eh. Got my hole a little. Darn it. Here's what we can do. Accidentally drilled my hole a little bit uh, too wide there. Stick this in here. Okay. Trying to get this as flat as possible. And again, you don't actually have to have these touching for it to stick. I'll go ahead and hit this with some CA or some kicker. Now this should attach on here just like so. And it's as simple as that. And then these other ones should attach on here exactly the same. So it really doesn't matter which Maverick goes on which pylon. All right, so that's kind of a recap. I'm gonna uh, go ahead, I've got some, uh, some sparrows and some sidewinders that I'm going to put onto this pylon. I've already done the fuel tanks, so they're magnetized. And uh, I'll show you what, uh, what they all look like when I'm finished. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got. And, you know, I got to thinking, I've got models in my display case that when I go to move them, I, some of them, they, they're not magnetized. Every time I move them, a missile pops off. So even if you don't ship models, uh, this might be something that you'll, you'll look into doing. Because to be honest with you, if you, you're eventually going to have to dust your models off. And breaking off um, missiles every time gets to be a pain in the butt. So... I've got everything magnetized, all, uh, everything for my Mavericks, my two fuel tanks, and then my pylons that have the uh, Sparrow and the Sidewinder. Now, <clears throat> the pylons are all glued on. That's, they're going to be the same color as the fuselage. And we'll just test everything out, and I'll show you how awesome this is. So these Mavericks don't have to, don't have to pick and choose. They'll all fit on here. Your mother Maverick, there it is. My fuel tanks, they've got a uh, three millimeter and then one of the two millimeter magnets on there. And that should be enough. Somebody's mowing outside, I need to get out and probably mow my yard again. Now the sparrows, they fit in here like so. And they do fit in here kind of tight even without the magnet, but I went ahead and added a magnet just in case. And I've got two two millimeter magnets that uh, in the missile and the pylon. But just in case, give it a little extra added benefit. And keep in mind, these each only have one magnet, uh, one in the pylon and one in the missile. So I didn't use more than one. Now the sidewinders, it was a little difficult I mean, you're going to have a little bit of it that sticks out unless you can get a tinier magnet than a 2 millimeter, which I couldn't find. Um, but I've always used this. And it works out okay. You just got to be careful with, when you, with how you drill because you can, you know, drill your part apart. Drill it in half. And we'll throw the other sidewinder on there. And there we go. Everything's on there. Perfect. And then, uh, you know, when I ship it, I can just pop these off. And if the owner wants to, you know, obviously I'm, these are the only missile stores that he's got. But if he doesn't want the missiles on there for some reason, he can just pop them off. But, you know, when I ship this, 
uh, rather than shipping these separately and having him glue them on, all he has to do as soon as he gets it, he can pop it on there and he's good to go. So there we go, magnets for my missiles and fuel tanks. All right, let's take a look at the decals I'm gonna be using. These are from Fighter Town decals. I ordered them directly from their website. I think it was like 30 bucks, made it to my house, I think about a week later. And uh, for 30 bucks, you get all of these uh, markings for all of these aircraft, even the new, from the new movie. So that's a pretty good deal. So 30 bucks, uh, basically a dollar a set. So, uh, you know, that's really cool. Uh, good value there. Now, I've only used the decals for Maverick and Goose's helmet here. And my solve set didn't work, but trying to get decals to wrap around a little ball, especially when it's that tiny, is rather difficult. What I ended up doing was hitting them with a hair dryer, and they immediately sucked down, and I could smooth them out, and they look really good. So I'll flash up a picture of what those look like. But uh, the, the rest of the decals look incredible, um, really nice. Hopefully they go down really well on the plane. And they give you a lot of information about the, uh, the, the movie aircraft. Now obviously we're doing Maverick and Gooses here, 114. And um, one of the, the issues with the Tamiya kit is they just give you this little thing underneath the, uh, where the TCS camera would be. And apparently they, they stripped those cameras when they shipped them to the movie set to be used on the other, the military, uh, military's aircraft. So uh, they just used a bullet fairing in place of the TCS camera. So what I did, since Tamiya didn't have a TCS camera or, or anything to go uh, above this little, uh, I assume this is some kind of a pod or targeting pod or something, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I just used a little head of a missile and made my own little bullet fairing on there to match it. And uh, I think that will look that will look pretty good. But just because that's kind of a noticeable thing on the plane, I went ahead and corrected that. But I think everything else should be pretty accurate to what the movie was. So uh, those are the decals, those are the markings. Now I've got my paint mixed up with Tamiya and I've got the FS numbers here medium gray, dark ghost gray, and light ghost gray. But it's all faded, it's gonna be grungy, it's gonna be dirty, it's gonna be weathered. So uh, you've got the tricolor camouflage scheme on Maverick and Gooses where you've got the dark ghost gray on the side, the medium gray, which is a darker gray on the top that comes around and makes this little loop here and on the upper wing surfaces, and then the light ghost gray on the bottom. But when you look at it, it almost looks like one, uh, color but you can kind of differentiate where the dark or the uh, medium gray is on top here and so what I'm going to do is probably just use dark ghost gray and light ghost gray and just make sure that I've got the uh, the differentiation between uh, up here along the canopy and then everything else is just going to be faded almost into you know just a, a mishmash of different uh, shades on the rest of the plane so that's kind of where I'm at with that uh, we'll go over how I'm getting this set up to paint and uh, should be able to throw some primer on it in the next episode. All right, we were out here at the pool table so we can get a good look at everything that we're doing before we go to paint. Now, it's pretty well stripped down. I don't have the wings on. I left the vertical stabilizers and the horizontal stabilizers off. The uh, horizontal ones just plug in. There's a little grommet inside of here that uh, it just plugs in and you can move it around. So that's pretty easy to deal with. Now with the, um, the vertical stabilizers, they fit on here really nicely. So I'm just gonna leave these off because I am gonna have to do some masking and painting around the engine area here. So I will be able to glue these on with some sprue goo after I get them painted and they should fit on there perfectly. So that is a plus. So I will paint these separately and if you've never seen the Tamiya F14 kit before, the wings, the engineering on this is just really awesome. 
So obviously the wings move back and forth and they've got these little nubs here that the wings plug into. And so you can paint these separately and I don't even glue these on. So uh, when I ship the model, I ship it with the wings off and the owner just plugs them in just like that. So pretty awesome engineering. But what I wanted to show you was the base and I went ahead and normally when I get ready to paint in between paint and decals I paint the base but I was really excited about this one because I had an idea in my head based off one that I did in the past and uh, so I got excited went ahead and painted it and I thought it turned out really cool so I've got two sets of rods here and they're offset just a little bit so the plane is slightly angled and I also drilled holes at an angle so that will also uh, aid in not having to bend the rods too much but still give me the angle that I wanted and you can see these are really long because I've got they plug into the engine back here and the engines go I think pretty far back yeah they go right about here and then I took my tubing that I normally use and then stuck it in so then the tubing goes an extra distance right here. So you've got a really long length of uh, rod that's into here. So basically you plug it into the base and then the plane goes in just like so. And there we go. Let me get it centered a little bit. But that's what it's gonna look like. And I, let me move the camera. It's kind of hard to fit this in. So that's what it's gonna look like. I think it's gonna look really cool sitting like that. So that's it for this. And uh, uh, we will probably paint it on the next, yeah, the next video will be a painting video. We'll get primer on it and then we'll run through how I'm gonna paint this whole thing. And uh, we'll just kind of play it by ear. So thanks for watching. See you on the next video.